Good morning, we are Team Cookie Pandicorns and today we will be talking more about what we have accomplished and learned from this RCAP experience. Presenting our team consisting of Vera Ong Lee Wen and Benita Yalini Benedict. We are close friends and we are both from Raffles Girls School Robotics Club. Our team name comes from our love of panda unicorn hybrids and cookies. We have prior experience with some coding languages, namely Python and C++, and have participated in different competitions together, such as NRC, IVP, and iCool Challenge. However, this is our first time participating in RCAP Co-Space Rescue for Steps U19. This is our agenda for today. Firstly, we will be covering our overall experience and some challenges we faced. Secondly, we will talk about the AI algorithms and various strategies we put in place for our higher score. Next, we will be sharing our learning experience and our personal reflections. Finally, we will be commenting on our results. Let's now start with an overview of the preliminary challenge. This was the map used for the preliminary challenge. Our task was to pick up as many red, black and cyan objects as possible and deposit them in the orange deposit zones while avoiding the traps, scoring as many points as possible. Through considering some of the challenges we faced and brainstorming together for possible strategies and by rewatching competition matches from the ICO challenge held earlier this year, we collated a list of strategies to help us get a higher score. These are some of the obstacles we faced while coding. The first problem was ensuring that our trap avoidance worked every time. Another challenge was collecting as many objects in the most time-efficient way possible. To achieve this, we had to consider the order in which the car collected objects. Our last major obstacle was ensuring that the scores were not floats. We wanted to score as many points as we could without relying on luck, but instead on our strategy. One of the obstacles we faced was trap avoidance. The robot would keep moving in circles due to the walls right next to the trap, which messed up the sequence for wall avoidance. To avoid this, we had to ensure that the speed at which the robot was moving is not too fast, so that it can detect the yellow square. To make the detection of the trap precise, we used threshold values. Another challenge was collecting the highest number of objects possible. Our next few strategies are set to help us with that. We saved some time by increasing the speed of the robot as much as we could without affecting the accuracy of detection. Another strategy was to stop the robot from collecting objects when fully loaded to prevent it from wasting 3 seconds picking up objects. Our last strategy was to deposit the objects only when the robot was fully loaded, which would save the time used to deposit the objects. Having all three colors in the car when depositing helps us gain more points. Hence, we used square targeting to plan a route for the robot to travel to, so that it will collect two red, two black, and two cyan objects in one load. The robot will only deposit once it is fully loaded, helping us ensure that the RRBB CC set is maintained. This was our last challenge. By ensuring that our scores were not fluked, we could gauge how well our code worked and how to improve it. Hence, we resettled our maps periodically and retook our scores multiple times to make sure that we didn't get a higher or lower score by chance. We also sent our DLL files to our friends to help us run and receive the scores to ensure that our computer wasn't the reason for fluke scores. For the preliminary round, our results ranged between 1,100 to 1,450 points. For the finals, we aimed to get at least 2,000 points. To help us improve our score, we will be changing our strategies such as trap avoidance as well as tuning the speed and rotations and planning better routes for the robot to take. In the next segment, we will be talking about some of the innovative strategies we use to help us achieve a more efficient run and hence a better score. For the highest score, we had some mini tasks which would be further split up and explained in the next few slides. Square targeting was our first strategy. We used the variables position x and position y to help us determine the current position of the robot. By using the Pythagoras theorem, we were able to find the shortest distance to a target square with the ultrasonic sensor values. Using trigonometry, we could determine the angle of rotation towards the target square. The video shows square targeting in progress. The chart on the right shows the route we would plan for a robot to take during the preliminary round. If it was fully loaded, the car would go to the nearest deposit squares in the top right and top left corner of the map. If not, the robot would aim to collect objects from different zones. We give them special importance to the special zones to help us score more points. The robot first tries to relocate the square, the cyan squares in the special zone since they are worth the most points, followed by the red squares in the special zone and finally the black squares in order of highest points to lowest points. There are only 15 seconds left. The robot would deposit the objects with more points. 
Route planning was crucial to help us get the highest number of objects, since it would shorten the distance the robot needed to take to collect as many objects as possible within a shorter time frame. We used conditionals to help us determine the flow of the code, which was coded based on the position of the object in each square and the easiest flow of movement to get there. We first targeted the special zones and mainly avoided the squares with traps unnecessary to the route, which saved points as well as time. This is the pseudocode for route planning. In the code above, if there are less than two cyan objects, the robot targets the middle square, which is the special zone containing cyan objects. After picking up two cyan objects, it moves on. If there are less than two red objects, the robot moves to the bottom of the map, the red special zone. After picking up two red objects, it moves on. If there are less than two black objects, the robot moves to the right bottom corner. After picking up the two black objects, it has a full load and moves to the deposit zone to deposit all the objects. It repeats till time is up. While one problem we faced was that the objects which were not deposited when the run ended got wasted. Our first strategy was to deposit within the first 15 seconds. The second strategy we wanted to include was to implement one deposit every minute, so that not too much time is wasted if the robot is unable to collect 6 objects for a prolonged time, tuned based on the map. The last strategy was the robot to target somewhere else based on the map spawn, if it is stuck at the same square for more than 15 seconds. This way, the robot wouldn't spend too much time trying to find objects that may not exist within the particular square it is on. The loaded objects variable helps us know the number of objects the robot has picked up. To allow the color sensor to detect the ob objects properly, the speed of the robot adjusts based on the whether the robot is loaded or not. If the robot is fully loaded, the speed of the robot is slower to help it detect traps. If not, the speed of the robot is faster to save time. The second action, depositing on an RRBBCC set mentioned a few slides before, needs the loaded object variable to know the number of each object picked up. Centering rotation is something which is important for wall avoidance. The centering is implemented so that the robot is equidistant from the walls, which helps it to avoid crashing. Differential steering is, in essence, the use of proportional steering with multiple rangefinders. The ultrasonic values from each sensor determine how far the robot is from the wall. So, the closer the robot is to an object, the higher the error, hence the higher the rotation, and so a sharper turn is made to avoid the object. Bugging is something that is important to help us improve our code. As of now, most of the code is free of bugs and runs with a high success rate. However, the square targeting code is a bit flukish, returning unreliable scores. To fix the problem, we have adjusted the values and rotations as well as fixed implementation issues. Solving this issue will save much time and help us map out the route we want the robot to take. The third part of our presentation, where we will be talking about key takeaways and what we would like to share with all future RCAP participants. RCAP, we learned a lot of things. In terms of coding experience, we both learned how to code in C. We also learned how to think out of the box to come up with various solutions to tackle problems. Another key takeaway is to not rely on chance, but to instead come up with strategies that make the process smoother. Regarding teamwork, we learned that communication was key in helping us understand each other's coding style. Due to COVID-19, communication was hindered, but we continued communicating online. Character-wise, we found out that we had to persevere to achieve our goals. We also learned that to appreciate our teachers and friends for their endless help, since without them, we would have not come this far. Dear future RCAP participants, we would like to share a few pointers to help you during your participation in Coast Space Rescue Challenge. Don't be afraid to make sacrifices. Without sacrifices and hard work, there is no chance of success. Even if coding gets tiring and rigorous sometimes, don't ever give up. Have an open mind. It helps along the way to have feedback from people around you. Managing your time is important too. Everything should be done early to allow for sufficient buffer time, so avoid procrastinating. Every team competition requires some cooperation amongst teammates and teamwork makes the dream work, so remember, always communicate with one another. We will now be concluding our participation in RCAP. When we started coding, our aim was to achieve a score above 1000. After a few weeks, we managed to constantly get around 1135. Right now, our goal is to get 2000 points, and we are trying to increase our scores by editing our code for square targeting functions. In the previous slide, we mentioned that the biggest reason for lower scores was the square targeting function. Other than that, we have other problems we need to solve. We need to improve our wall avoidance function since the robot gets stuck in the corners occasionally. Another challenge is that the color sensors do not detect the deposit zone sometimes. Another problem is the inaccurate trap detection. In this table here, you can see how much having a strategy improves our score. By simply using root planning and square targeting, we got 600 more points. If we had the chance to change something about our code, we would include a time-based strategy for the deposit zone, where we can have one deposit per minute to speed up collection and depositing. We will also improvise on our route plans, where spawn points are better incorporated into the code as the inclusion of random spawns in the code.
We will also convert our hard code to soft code since it is more flexible and can be adapted to all maps instead of hard coding specific routes. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.